So I just came off my first weekend ranked in Mythic, and I've come to the conclusion that this card here is extremely powerful. Uh, I'll show you some clips, but basically every time I came up against it, I had I struggled a lot. And I think the reason is that in my mage deck that I was using over weekend ranked, and a lot of people's decks, honestly, at least probably 90% of people, rely fully on the Sanctum to deal with their opponent's uh, relics. So basically, nobody's typically running a, like Wiccan Trapper or anything else that removes their ability. Uh, so that, that really gives us the opportunity to play something like a Necroceptor and take full advantage of it. Uh, I'm going to show you this version of a zombie death deck that I came up with. It's based on some other zombie decks that I've seen playing over the weekend ranked. Um, and basically what I ended up doing after the weekend, I spent my two Blessings of the Gods event, because I've had so far two Blessings of the Gods events, um, and so I was able to actually buy everything in this deck for just those two uh, events worth of tokens. Uh, I think right now it's about $60 worth of Gods tokens um, in value um, to build this, and I think this is even a little bit overestimated. So in that sense, it's relatively budget. Um, but I kind of want to just go through all this because I think that this deck is extremely powerful for how cheap it is. And I think it could be in the top 100 in Mythic over on the rank if it's played properly. So I just uh, started playing with it yesterday. But I'm going to show you some games on how I use it. And I'm going to show you how to use things like the Sanctum in your favor. Because when playing this deck, the whole goal with the Sanctum is to stop people and punish them for not playing things like the Wiccan Trapper. So what you're going to do is lock the Sanctum up not allow them to get any durability remover, and then you're going to have the Necroceptor just pumping out two two zombies with Leech all game long for free. All right, so I'm going to take you quickly through the deck, and then I'm going to show you a few games on how I play with it. In many ways, it's similar to a lot of zombie death style decks. Uh, I just have a few changes in there that make it, uh, I think, a little bit better and also saves on some cost. I also added just some generally good cards that are really low cost to keep this whole thing uh, in a good price range that people can afford just off of their Blessings of Gods events and not rely on things like Legendaries or Epics or, or many rares. Um, so basically, most of the cost in this deck comes from the Necroceptor itself. We have two of them because we want to pick them up early in the Mulligan stage or right in the beginning of the game. Uh, we, we typically won't use both of them ever, but it's just there so that we can have a double chance to draw it early. All right, so let's go through it one by one. All right, so Blight Bomb, pretty self-explanatory. Should definitely be running this in, in almost everything death. Uh, Brimstone, so this is basically just allowing us, this is similar to our Soul Burn, which we're going to be using uh, Frenzy a lot. So, so we're going to use this to help us get our Frenzy. Uh, and then the draw card just basically gets us closer to picking up a Necroceptor if we don't have it yet. All right, so the Undead Roach, I'm not sure if this one's necessary. I've been playing with it because it has Nether, so it synergizes with some other things in the deck. Uh, but I think this could be replaced by another Wild Hog and uh, maybe maybe uh, Axe Woman or something. All right, so Vrash's Fiend, also another with a 1-1 one, one Zombie Afterlife. Cursed Obelisk, so this is something that if you don't pick up your Necroceptor in time, the Cursed Obelisk can really start filling up the board with zombies, which is what exactly what we want. Uh, the whole point of this deck is just to have overwhelmed them with zombies, not let them get any damage to our face because we're just leeching all that health back the entire time. So this helps with that. It's a little bit less good than the Necroceptor. This one is just extremely powerful due to that reason with not people not being able to remove it. So, uh, but yeah, this in case you don't pick that up, then it's nice to have this down on the board as well. Fickle Cambion. So yeah, I mean, if we have it, we're for, every time we hit them with a zombie, we're going to gain one health on this. And every time we hit our hero power, we're going to gain plus one strength. So this card is extremely, extremely powerful in this deck. All right, so this is just a generally good 3-drop, but it could be replaced by other 3-drops. It's totally not necessary to the deck. All right, so now the main card, the whole thing this deck is built around is this Necroceptor, which gives you a 1-1 one, one zombie after every turn. Uh, and if you're frenzied, which you're going to be pretty much frenzied every turn due to your hero power, it's a 2-2 two, two zombie. So as long as you're right and they actually cheaped out and didn't put any durability remover in their deck, you're, they're pretty much going to be having a free 2-2 two, two zombie every, every single turn. For three mana, that's amazing. Um, so I'll show you later in the videos actually how you keep them from getting the uh, durability removers in the Sanctum. Uh, but yeah, basically it revolves around uh, not spending your favor and just waiting uh, 
uh, making them make the first purchase. So if a durability remover comes up, you're gonna be able to have the first opportunity to scoop it off the board. So now we have the Decaying Rhino, which is a five, six for four mana, absolutely insane stats. Uh, you're gonna be frenzied because you're almost every turn you're gonna be able to hit that soul burn. So it's a great card. The Old Ritual, this card is absolutely massive because uh, having those 1-1 one, one zombies or 2-2 two, two zombies, uh, you're basically going to be able to hit face or something with it zombie in one turn, and then after you do that, you're going to throw the old ritual on it, and you're going to get a 4 mana 6-6 six, six another spawn. I've seen where people just concede as soon as you drop this old ritual, so it's a pretty big card. It's might even, it might even be worth having two of these in the deck, uh, maybe replacing one of the undead roaches for the old ritual. I find a lot of the times I don't need these one or two drop cards because we're, the board is full with zombies anyways. So yeah, I think maybe two old rituals might be better. Undead Chimera, it's just an easy four drop that uh, on turn four, you can still get the um, Frenzy off and it's easy to hit your Frenzy every turn with it. All right, so the Nether Swarm Lord is like a game ender. Uh, if you can actually manage to keep that on the board with a full zombie board, then it absolutely is insane because the zombies happen to be Nether as well. The Ray of Disintegration, I find a really good use case for this in this deck is taking care of things with armor like guild enforcers and whatnot just because you're going to have a lot of low power zombies um, the armor just completely counters them so yeah really save up your ray of disintegration for when you absolutely need it all right so the back blood blast is just a good solid board clear and because you, you're going to have the necroceptor on there that means after you get the board clear you're going to get that two two zombie uh, on board so you're not actually having an empty board uh, Wiccan Trapper, yeah, so this is just in case we run up to a deck like ours or a war, or a, a war deck. All right, so I basically use a Wild Hog every time I don't know what else to put in the one drop slot. Just for one mana, a 2-3 is a really good thing to have on board. Also, anything with a little bit of RNG that gives you extra stats helps with these budget decks because it gives you the stats that some of the better cards have for lower cost, but you're, you're gambling a little bit. Um, so basically just makes both of your decks a little bit worse. Uh, Inspirator, when you summon, yeah, so this deck I'm thinking about getting rid of this card because I, I usually don't get too much value out of it. For a 2-drop, just having the 1-1 one, one is really low uh, stats. So like things like the Mage or uh, Deception decks, they can just ping it with their hero power. And yeah, if this card was going to be viable, I think it should have a 1 attack and 2 health. Um, but I think in its current state, it's just a little bit too weak. So I'm going to actually get rid of this for something else. Guild Enforcer. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what to say here. It's just a great card, all-around card. Uh, protects your zombies. Hello, Keeper. Um, yeah, so basically, because you're going to be having a lot of zombies on the board, and they're going to be going into the void, then this thing is going to be super massive when you drop it on turn 6. This is easily going to be a 9-7 for 6 mana, and it's just a game-ender if they don't have an answer to it. Finally, the Veteran Cataphract, however you pronounce that. Um, so I love this card. It's, it's, it's good in a lot of decks, because... For 7-drop, you already get the 6-6 six, six stats, which is great. And then the Roar, which is give a friendly creature plus 3-3. Three, three. It's basically like dropping a plus 3-3 three, three with God Blitz on it. Because you can just drop this onto a, a zombie that's on the board. And you have plus 3 damage right to the face, usually. Or you can like take a care of a, of a really big threat. So yeah, I, th I feel like um, if you don't know what to put as your 7-drop, I usually just put this in, in my decks. Because I think it's a really good card. All right, so with that, we're gonna go play a few games. I'm gonna show you how it works. And we're gonna like pay attention to the Sanctum because this deck really requires you to play around the Sanctum. All right, so these Cube of Blight Bomb, start replacing this. Don't need that. <clears throat> um, the question of this deck always is, you know, do you keep the, the good curve you have on board or do you start looking for a Scepter? Okay, we got lucky. <laughs> There we go. Usually if I have a couple charges left, I just start looking for the scepter. I mean, if you only have one charge left for changing cards, then it's debatable whether you're going to keep that three drop or not. But with two charges to look for that scepter, it's probably worth it. So, with the Ferocious Fiend, we have a... Uh, yeah, I think we go with the Fiends. Here's the reason behind it. Uh, if he does damage to face, you know, we can get it back with the leech anyways. Um, we have a body on board, which takes one turn to activate before we can start attacking. Oh, let it go there. Um, and the Blight Bomb is instant, so we can always Blight Bomb 
the hoplite next next turn. And then if we do that, then we have this guy who can instantly attack face. And we get that uh, health back anyways, two of the three damage. So that's the reason. Now, the one problem with that theory was uh, that now with the Neuroceptor, um, yeah, we couldn't do the Blight Bomb, but that's all right. We have a lot of health with this deck, so. But yeah, normally you don't want to be taking six damage to face for no reason. Alright, so perfect. Actually, this works out nicely for us. So we're going to easily just a Blight Bomb. There we go. Um, we're going to... I mean, it is confused. So here you have the op option to just go face. Uh, or take it out. Um, and then we're, we're, we're going to be hitting the Soul Burn anyways. Um, but actually we're going to take it out just because he has the Salinas Mark. And there we go. But you could have also went face there and just hope for a little RNG, but... I mean, I like that plus. It's just too good on curve. So we got to hit face though. This, you know, the, the Balthazar, it's not really a big deal. Don't don't get, don't over uh, compensate when they drop this and throw everything you got because just because it's a legendary. Usually, I mean, he's only got three cards, so the fact that Selena's Mark is only one instead of two mana is not usually a big deal. So yeah, I, I, Baldazar is a little bit uh, overvalued as a legendary, I think. If he's a legendary, he should at least have like better stats. Instead of a 3-2, maybe a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, the card is definitely pretty meh. All right, so we got to figure out what we're going for here. It's not worth wasting our array our here, or is it? I think we're just going to go for some RNG. Hope that we get something good. Oh, perfect. Wow, that was really lucky. That was way too lucky. <laughs> and we'll let him kill us actually and we're getting this to pre protect the um, nether swarm okay yeah this deck is just really hard for people to deal with I mean they have to have a lot of spells or just you know get super lucky early on with board control nobody thinks about adding durability removers to their decks all right <clears throat> so uh pretty slow start I think, um, yeah, it's not really the best position, but uh, going up against nature is just generally always not easy. Okay, so now we have the choice between what do we start, uh, but going into the Fickle Cambion, start building that up, 
which actually wouldn't work because you could just hero power it. Um, so we start building our curse objects. Actually, that was a huge mistake. <laughs> we should have played this first because now we can't play it at all. Well, we can still drop it, but basically we would have gained an extra health there. So um, what, if we would have hit the, zo the zombie second, but uh, pay attention to order. Uh, but anyways, we have an option, Wild Hog or Soulburn. So Soulburn will give us uh, an extra zombie or we can drop the Wild Hog. But I think we we're going to want that extra zombie just because uh, this she's probably going to use the Selena's mark here. And we don't want that going off on our Fickle Cambion um, because he can Skeleton Heavy for the and Selena's market. Um, so now that gives us an extra target for um, the random. But yeah, see now. Yeah, that's just uh, basically we wouldn't have lost our Fickle Cambion there if we would have played the proper order last turn. So that really is just our, a mistake there. And yeah, we should have still had it. But you know, that happens. That's why it's good to review your games. Always, always keep two things in the back, a few things in the back of your head. One, like I said a million times, the Sanctum, uh, and how much favor you and your opponent have. And then the other thing to keep in your head is, um, yeah, uh, order. You know, what order do you play your cards? It's super important. Something you can easily forget. All right, so this one, this one's got confused, um, which means we can play the Nether Swarm. And the nice thing about that is uh, the zombies are Nether, so you're gonna get massive buffs next turn. Nether, Nether, Nether. What is this structure? Okay, so this is just an easy. Easy play there. And we are going to end up with two zombies. So I would just kill this one. Otherwise, we're going to max out the board, anyways. Yeah, this card is just insane. Just the fact that it gives plus one one to every friendly nether is already great. And then it also draws a card is just overpowered, I think. I think it's just a little bit too much. Maybe it should either have just a plus one strength or plus one health. 
um, and then maybe draw a card or just the plus one one, take away the draw card altogether. Because I think it's just a little bit uh, too much. But works for us. All right, so let's just go for for this one. Oh wow! <laughs> um, let's do it again. Whenever you have a card that draws a card, you always want to use that one first uh, in, in when you play order, because you can pick up something like that, for example. So whenever you have something that draws a card, that's always your first card or the first thing you do, no matter what uh, order you're going to do things, always do the one that draws a card first. Okay, so now we're just going to go hard. Pretty much fully heal ourselves here. And 6, 4, 10. So we're not going to do this this turn just because it makes it one damage less hard for okay well, yeah. all right so that's it for the video um yeah basically why this deck works is because people aren't running this remove durability and they really should be so this is just like you know punishing them for that if you have any advice on or an ideas on what to replace the seven drop with the inspirator or the undead roach just let me know in the comments because those are the three that I'm looking to replace. So anyways, enjoy the deck and see you next video.